College football is right around the corner, so we're going to make sure that you guys have everything you need to know leading into this season, starting with FSU football. Joining us today is Bob Ferrante from Knowles247.com. Bob, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Well, let's get started with quarterback DeAndre Francois. Last year, he led the Knowles to 10 wins through for over 3,300 yards and 20 touchdowns. What adjustments does he have to make going into year two? You know, Francois had a freshman season that was really about as good as you could expect from any guy being thrown into the fire. It was a constant pass rush. You know, I think it was it was the number two passing season for a Florida State freshman. It was only just behind Jameis Winston from 2013 from his Heisman season. So step number, number two in his progression is really to be able to uh, prepare for that pass rush. He has to know where his checkdowns are, how to get rid of the ball a little bit more quickly, and really reading defenses. The coaching staff has been on him about studying film in this offseason, developing chemistry with the receivers, and figuring out how to best dissect these defenses. And when they show zone, how do you attack that? When they show man, how do you attack that? So making him as prepared as possible when he gets to the line of scrimmage so that he can be in a position to find success. They're going to be missing the school's all-time leading rusher, Dalvin Cook, who was drafted in the second round to the Minnesota Vikings. But they do have some talented options. The Knowles have five former four- or five-star recruits vying to replace Cook. Tell us a little bit about some of those front runners. I think the early thought is that this is going to be a kind of a bullpen by committee approach where we're going to see a number of these running backs throughout the game. It's not going to be a workhorse where Dalvin Cook in the past ran 30 or more times a game. So really, it's going to start off with a guy like Jaquez Patrick from Orlando. He's a junior, and he's kind of a bigger back, about 6'2", 230, very physical. He's trying to keep his pad level low so that he can move the pile. This is a guy who has been very efficient, getting more than five yards per carry when he filled in for Dalvin back when Cook had a few of those injuries the last two years. And we expect that he will get a large number of carries and that he might be the starter against Alabama. But in truth, it doesn't really matter who starts. We're going to see so many different running backs this year. The one that has everybody in Tallahassee talking has been Cam Akers. He's a five-star from Mississippi. And the early comparisons, if you can believe it, people are thinking that he is a very cook-like runner, very elusive, has a quick cut. He was a quarterback a lot of times in high school, but he is a pure runner. He's a, a fantastic piece of the offense. I think we're going to see Coach Jimbo Fisher calling a lot of running plays. We could see two tailbacks in the game at the same time. So it's, it's really an interesting, those different possibilities you can see a coach and play caller come up with, with guys like Patrick and Akers. And Florida State really brought in some other guys who you think would be starting in year one as freshmen. Uh, Kalon Laybourne is a talented five-star. He's shown his versatility at the high school level. He could be a receiver out of the backfield. And Zaquandre White from Fort Myers is also really an exceptional player. He might be limited to special teams and some situational plays on offense, but this is a really deep and talented backfield, and it, it's going to be fun to watch these guys. Moving on from offense to defense, how good can FSU's defense be now that they have a healthy Derwin James? You know, potentially top five. Potentially this is the group that at the defensive line, linebacker, and defensive back level, it's all filled with future NFL prospects. This could be a defense that's as good as that 2013 group that sent just about everybody to the NFL. And with Derwin, it, it really all kind of starts with him. He is the most versatile safety that the college game has seen probably since Miami Sean Taylor more than two decades ago. Derwin can play up front. He can rush off the edge sort of as a smaller defensive end. He can be a linebacker in the box. He can cover tight ends and running backs. He can be a deep safety. He's just got the kind of versatility that you have to account for as an offense on every play and try to figure out how to beat him. Well, with the addition of James, their defense is expected to be one of the team's strengths, but what are some of the weaknesses you see going into the 2017 season? I think the defense is going to be really, really good. It could be top five as long as injuries aren't an issue. Injuries were a big issue for the defense last year. The big question mark, and really if you're listing question marks one, two, and three, it would all be on the offensive line. This is an offensive line that you know, loses its left tackle in Roderick Johnson to the NFL a year early, and they really don't have a true replacement. 
They've tried a few different options from Josh Ball to Rick Leonard and now Derek Kelly from nearby uh, Gretna, Florida, just about 20 miles from Tallahassee. He could be the option at left tackle. They really have to figure out how to keep DeAndre Francois upright because one of the other main question marks is who's going to be the backup quarterback. And really, if it's if DeAndre Francois is injured in any capacity, if he has to miss more than, say, a drive or two, Florida State might have to turn to a true freshman. It's not an ideal situation, but that might be something that they have to explore. So pass protection, keeping Francois upright, are very critical storylines this year. FSU is coming into the season looking to take the ACC and make it back to playoffs. Do you think they can do it? I think so. I think this schedule is really challenging. You know, forecasting them to go 12-0 and is just, it doesn't look possible at all. September is going to be extremely tough with Alabama and then Louisiana Monroe, Miami, NC State. And then in October, you've got Louisville and the Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, Lamar Jackson, followed by November with Clemson and Florida. It is just one of the toughest schedules that I think Florida State has played in, in recent memory. I think realistically, you're looking at 11 and 1. Perhaps they drop Alabama and then run the table. But I think where the ACC is, if you can be successful in that conference, get to the championship game, knock off whoever comes out of the coastal division, potentially Miami, we could see a rematch with Florida State Miami. So if the Seminoles are able to go 11 and 1 and then win that ACC title game, they're in the playoffs. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that season opener on September 2nd. you got ACC versus SEC. You've got Jimbo Fisher versus Nick Saban. Why is this game getting so much hype? I think a lot of it, there's just so many great storylines to it. This was a game that you know the Chick-fil-A Bowl folks wanted to put together back in 2010. And Jimbo Fisher kept putting it off until it was the right time, until the program was on a spot where he wanted it to be. And I think back in 2014, 2015, he started to feel like it was in the spot that he wanted, not just coming off a national title, but years of success on the field, recruiting classes, building on top of each other. And they put this deal together, and you know, it's, it's everything you could ask for on an opening weekend. It's the number one team in Alabama, the number three team in, in Florida State, two coaches who were on the same staff together at LSU from 2000, 2004, it's, it's got that ACC-SEC thing going for it where you know, you'll probably see a lot of fans tune in and want to be pulling for a conference and not just a team. This is you know, five stars and four stars on both sides of the ball. It's really got that matchup that you know, the Chick-fil-A Bowl folks are calling the greatest opener of all time. And you, you, can't, you can't really argue against it. It's one of the best openers that we've seen put together on, on the first weekend. Well, Bob, thanks again for joining us. That was Bob Fronte from Knowles247.com. FSU will kick off their season September 2nd against Alabama.